Credits code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old oh, boys, can't you code it? <laughs> Program it right. Nothing ever happens in the In this video, we're going to show you how to get data from um, a Microsoft Excel file, a spreadsheet file, into Stata. This is a very common way that the government distributes data, and it's an important way to get your information into Stata. I'll be honest with you, I don't like keeping my data in spreadsheets, and you'll see why that people do a lot of fancy formatting, and it makes it difficult to actually import it into Stata. Here we're looking at a directory, and I've got two files in there. The file that's most important is this spreadsheet data file, and I'm going to open that up so we can look at it. And the goal is to get this data into Stata. I'm going to run my copy of Stata 13. And let's take a look at these data. You can see that the data occupy columns A through D and rows 1 through 6. The first row are a set of variable names. This is the simplest kind of input, and it's really the preferred way. If, if you have data that come in like this, it's really simple to get them into Stata first row variable names and then everything else is data. I'm just going to come over here in Stata and open up my data editor. And I can show these things side by side. So the first method we're going to use is simply to come into my spreadsheet. I'm left clicking and holding down and dragging and highlight this range of data. Right click and copy and then just come over here into my data editor in uh, Stata. Right click and paste. Stata gives me a little window here and it is now asking me is the first row data or the first row variable names? In this case they're variable names and there they are. That's it. That's all you have to do. I can now close this window. You can see in my variables window the variable names are there. I can describe the data list the data, save the data file, and so forth. So for small data sets or just quick kind of one-off little jobs, a great way is just to copy and paste directly into Stata. I'm going to clear this data set. and Let's go back and look at an example that's a little bit um, more difficult. I've got another spreadsheet. It's, a, it's a, another worksheet in the same spreadsheet file. And here you can see that the only difference in these files, in, in these two sets of data, are the variable names. In this one, the first row contains variable names that span two, really two rows within one row. And this is very difficult for Stata to figure out what's going on. So if I use the same method I used before to left click and drag the area that I want to copy into Stata, right click and copy, come over to Stata, right click and paste treat the first row as variable names you can see that Stata didn't know what to do with those merged multi-row cells and it made an error so this really didn't work although I can fix this by simply coming over here left clicking and highlighting a new area that excludes the variable names and pasting them in and Stata recognized right away that there were no variable names and it assigned its own var1 through var4. So if I have if I use this method I'll probably have some post processing to do to rename my variables. You can also automate this. You can use an import command and I prefer this method because it allows me to get it right every time. So it may take a little more work initially, but I know it'll run every time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the directory to my working directory using the cd command. I've already saved this big long directory in there, and that seemed to work just fine. I can do a, a dir command to see what's in there, and I see my spreadsheet file there. Now I can just type the import 
Excel using command. And you can see it, that I've got new variables A, B, C, and D. So Stata really didn't know what to do with my variable names. Let's take a look at the data set. Yeah, everything's come in as a string. And so Stata took that first row, which I know to be variable names, and just assumed that they were actually data. There is a fix for this. I'm going to come back here and reissue this command. I'm using page up in the command window. And I'm going to add some options. The first option is I'm going to add the first row option, which tells Stata that the first row of this spreadsheet is actually a um, is the variable names. And then I'm going to add the clear option because remember when I import data, I haven't saved this data file yet. It's not what I want. Stata won't let me destroy it or write over it. I have to explicitly issue a clear command, and I can do that right on this uh, command line window. Now looking at our variable window, it looks like we have uh, the correct variables. We can describe and list them. And that looks pretty good. And then we'd like to save this file as a Stata file so we can come back and use it later. Let's look at one last way to bring these data into Stata. Here I've pasted a command into the command window. Notice that it says import Excel sex equals a age equals c this says create a new variable called sex for the values in column a of our spreadsheet and a variable called age for all the values in column c of our spreadsheet i'm still using the clear command in case i have a data set in memory and now i'm also using the cell range option where i'm specifying the range from a2 to d6 we can look at our spreadsheet and see that a2 begins over here at female for the sex variable and, and at, at sorry cell a2 and extends down here to this 7 down in d6 now one thing to note here is that the sex variable is a string variable even though you know it says female and male but for status purposes, we'd like to have it be a numeric variable. So there's another command called encode. So what this encode command is going to do is it's going to take the sex variable, parse out the differences. So there's really only two categories, female and male. It's going to assign values of one to one category and two to the other and put them in a new variable called sex1. And if we browse the data, you can see that the color coding gives us a clue of how these variables differ. For the variable called sex, it's coded red, colored red, and you can see the actual values are string values. And the variable sex1 is colored blue, which lets us know that it's a string variable with a value label. And here we can see the actual value of female is 1, and I come down here, and male is 2. Of course, you can put all of these commands into a command file, and then you could execute the command file. And ultimately, that's, I think, what you want to do. I like to experiment at the command line until I get the commands working well. Then I copy them and edit them and get them perfect in my do file. And then I save that do file, and it becomes part of my, my statistical audit trail, my forensic auditing trail of everything I've done with the data I have. I've moved to a new directory now. And you can see that I've got several files in it. But really, the file I'm most interested in is this file at the bottom, which is um, a spreadsheet file I've downloaded from the FBI as part of their Uniform Crime Reports. I'd like to get this information into Stata. The other files are simply Stata do files I've created to help me do this, and we're going to go through them one, one at a time. Let's take a look at our data. This is much more typical of the kind of data you'll find available on the internet, and quite frankly, it's a mess to bring into Stata. 
here are a couple of problems with it. Notice that rows 1, 2, 3, and 4 don't contain any relevant information for the data set for our use in Stata. So we're either going to have to pre-process this file to get rid of that information or use some Stata options and then post-process the file. I'm going to show you a little bit of both. So there's one problem. Problem number two, if we look at line five or row five of this file, you'll notice that these variable names spread across multiple rows within a cell. And we already know that Stata won't handle that very well. So again, I'm either going to have to ignore them and create my own, or I'm going to have to pre-process this file to make it easily imported into Stata. Last problem, you can see that under state, so here we have Alabama, and then we first list the metropolitan counties, and then Alabama, the non-metropolitan counties. That big cell with Alabama metropolitan counties, all the separate counties, Ottawa, Baldwin, Bibb, and so forth, really need to have the state of Alabama's name attached to it. And then finally, we might want to be able to distinguish between the metropolitan and non-metropolitan counties, and that's all done in the state variable when we really should have it in a separate variable. If you look at the bottom of the spreadsheet, I've made a copy of this spreadsheet, and I've called it a clean version. And you can see that what I've done is I've fixed the state variable, I've created a metro non-metro variable, I've fixed all of the variable names so that now I could either use the import command to bring this into Stata or I could just copy and paste. It was a fair amount of work to do this. I only did it for two states. I went through Arizona. But it would certainly be possible to go through the whole data set and pre-process your spreadsheet so that it would easily import into Excel. We're going to use this spreadsheet and see what happens when we try to import the data. First, I'm going to change to my working directory. And I'm going to open up a Stata file that I've created. So, new command here. You may, see, you may have seen me use local macros, and I'm going to use one here. This command, local Excel file, takes the word Excel file and attaches to it everything in parentheses after it. That's table underscore 10 underscore offenses underscore known underscore and so forth. You can see it goes really off the screen. That's the name of the file that I got from the FBI. I could shorten the file name. I think that's okay, but I'm going to leave it the same in case I ever have to try to find this file again on the internet. I'd rather know what the FBI called it. I'll have a better chance of finding the exact same file. Of course, I should probably have noted the web page I got it from and put it in this program as a comment. Every time Excel sees that word Excel file and it's bracketed by kind of that back right above the on that same key as the tilde key, so it's an accent grave and a single quote, it will substitute in that big long file name. So if I execute these two lines of code, just run my do file. You can see that it runs fine. Now, did it work? I don't have any variable names in here. So Stata has automatically assigned them the names of the columns. I should probably describe my data and maybe list my data. That doesn't seem too helpful, so I'll edit. So we're beginning to see that what the problem is. Stata has taken table 10 and the names of this file and all this useless information and included them as variables. Here's the data I really want, but it's been confused by the table name. So what we're going to do is look at another Stata program and see if we can fix some of those problems. Notice here, I'm going to import Excel using my Excel file, and I'm specifying a cell range of A6 to L2580. Where did those numbers come from? Cell A6 is where our data begins. A6 
and L2580 is where it ends. Let's see if that works. Notice that I have some string variables, but I also have some numeric variables. And this looks much better. So now I have columns A through L. What I don't have are meaningful variable names. I still have all the other problems we talked about. I, can't, I don't have a metro, non-metro variable, and my state is um, only partially filled in. And I can try to fix those with some post-processing programming. But at a minimum, reading this very complicated file, I got most of the information into it I needed. Let's look at the final program I wrote. This program has a lot more complication in it, but let's just walk through it quickly. First of all, I changed to my default directory. That's one of the things I like to do in my programs. I keep all of my state of files in one directory for a project. Second thing I do, I come down here and I close any log that's open so I don't get an error. I'm creating a new log file called read-excel-crime-data.txt. It'll be a text file, and if it already exists in my disk, I'll replace it. So everything that happens from this point on will be written to a log file, so I'll have a record of it. Then I have the same command on line 7 and 8 that I had before. I'm going to define a local macro, and then I'm going to import a range of data. And now I start my post-processing. First thing I'm going to do is assign uh, variable names. I'm going to get rid of the A, B, C, and D and call them things like state one, county, violent crime, and so forth. Then let's take a look. Let's just go ahead and run this and see what happens each step of the way. By highlighting a range of uh, commands in this do file and then using the execute selection button I can just execute that little slice of commands so we can see we changed our names and now let's look at our data and see what other problems that we're gonna have well we can see we still have this and if we look at the variable state one that state one is not completely filled out so line 25 I'm going to issue this command. I'm going to replace those values of state. So state 1 will equal state 1 underscore n minus 1 if state is blank. Now that underscore n points to those observation numbers. And n minus 1, or the underscore n minus 1, says to look at the, at the case before it. So what that's going to do when I execute this is fill out all of that state information. Now let's look at lines 28 through 32. Here I'm going to create my metropolitan variable and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go into state 1 I'm going to look at the last two words in or sorry the second from last word in that cell which is always going to be either metropolitan or non-metropolitan. So we have Alabama-metropolitan counties and Alabama-non-metropolitan counties. So there's four things in each of those. I'm going to go to the end and then go minus one and check whether that's metropolitan or non-metropolitan and either code it as one or two. I'll define value labels and I'll assign them. Let's see if we can find... and there's our metropolitan variable. I still don't like the state variable because now I want to get rid of the dashes and the metropolitan non-metropolitan counties part. So down here in lines 35 and 36, I'm again going to make replacements in that where I'm going to use the, both the trim and the word functions and the sub and string functions, which you can look up under string functions in the, in the uh, manual. and I'm going to make better looking state variables. Now the state variable, the variable state1 is a 
string variable. And again, I can store it more efficiently since it's just Alabama repeated all these times. And I might want to use it later on in Stata for some kind of numeric reason. So I'm going to go ahead and encode it. That creates a new variable called state. And that variable is colored blue. So we know that that's a numeric variable that happens to have value labels. Now I'm going to do some other cleanup in my program here. I'm going to change by in lines 42 to 44. I'm going to change the order of these variables and I'm going to drop state 1 which I don't need anymore. Watch the variables window. So that reorders my variables. It takes the state variable, puts it after state 1, it puts the metro variable after county, and then I drop state 1. I'm going to add variable labels. I'm going to compress my data set. And just in case in creation and moving all these variables around, some were not saved as efficiently as they could be. So I get a little, little savings here in size. I'm going to execute three descriptive kinds of exploratory commands. We'll describe the data, summarize the data, and produce a code book. And we'll save the file. Now, I know that all the individual pieces work. This is getting to be a fairly long program. There's a lot of interesting stuff in it. I definitely encourage you to figure out how all of this is working. But notice that I'm closing the log here. So ultimately, to test this program, I'm not going to highlight any selections. I'm just going to come over here and execute the whole file. And you can see that it ran very quickly and brought all of my data in. This file then could become part of my workflow process, which is the first part of reading in the data from the Uniform Crime Reports. And then I would maybe and, and I would make a call to this program from a master file. So I'd have a program and a subprogram. This would be a subprogram. And then I could write other subprograms that would then go and analyze the data or do recodes and so forth. So there's some quick tips on how to bring data into Stata from Excel. You'll find a lot of data on the internet in spreadsheets. There's some com complexity, particularly if they use fancy labeling of the variables. And you can either pre-process that file or post-process the file. I like to post-process if I can, so that's all summarized in my um, do file. And if you have any questions or any problems, give me a call or send me an email and I'll do my best to answer them. Edits code in the day to give the keyboard a punch Why? Then crawl, score a lead and a break for some lunch Why? Call, relate, tabulate, process and screen Why? Program, print out, regress to the mean And it's old boys, can't you code it? Program it right, nothing ever happened